seems that like beauty, a sculpture's accuracy is in the eye of the beholder. The unveiling of a statue recently in Northern Ireland brought a bit of controversy with it, and it has to do with how well it captured Britain's late Queen Elizabeth II. Her late husband, Prince Philip, is also part of the bronze sculpture, but much of the murmuring centers on the woman who became Britain's longest reigning monarch, who's also known as one of the most photographed women in the world. The local council in the area where the statue's on display told NBC News that the response had been, quote, generally positive and that it was liked by most who'd seen it in person. A Canadian tourist told the AFP news agency that he's old enough to remember the queen from her coronation and that the statue's a wonderful depiction. However, there's been criticism as well, with some saying it looks more like Mrs. Doubtfire or an elderly lady at a market buying potatoes than the late queen. It's a representation that has stirred conversation across the nation, and some would say there's art in that. Hello and welcome to the show. I'm Carl Azus for The World from A to Z, your independently produced nonpartisan source for international events. There was some breaking news yesterday as we put this show together. U.S. government officials are investigating what looks like another attempt to assassinate former President Donald Trump. The Republican presidential nominee is safe. He was golfing yesterday at a course he owns in Florida when officials say a man with a rifle was spotted some distance ahead of him. Secret Service agents fired at the suspect, who jumped into a car and tried to get away, but he was captured and a rifle was recovered. This is all according to law enforcement sources who spoke to several major news outlets. Shortly after the incident, former President Trump sent out an email saying he was safe and well and that nothing would slow him down. President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris, who's also the Democratic presidential nominee, both said they were relieved to know that former President Trump is safe. Two months ago, the Republican candidate was shot in the ear while speaking at an outdoor campaign event in Pennsylvania. That also led to an investigation, and there were changes made at the Secret Service, the government agency whose work includes protecting political leaders. Where in the world? This is a parliamentary republic located in Central Europe. It's a landlocked nation surrounded by Germany, Austria, Slovakia, and Poland. Its capital is Prague. This is the Czech Republic, or Czechia, a nation of almost 11 million people. The Associated Press reports that parts of the Czech Republic have been the hardest hit by extensive and deadly flooding throughout Central Europe. All of its border countries have been affected, in addition to Romania and Hungary. Thousands were told to leave their homes as rivers burst their banks and the waters continued to rise on Sunday. At least eight deaths have been reported throughout Central Europe, triggered by tremendous amounts of rain that has fallen for days. Bridges have collapsed, phone and internet lines are out, the electricity is out for hundreds of thousands of households, mostly in Czechia. And one resident of the country says when it rains in the mountains, it takes five or six hours for the water to hit his village. So along with the evacuations, emergency workers were rushing to help those in need. The Czech prime minister says his government's focus was on saving lives. On this date in world history, a ship named the Mayflower not this ship, but one that might have looked a little like it. It's at sale from England on September 16th. The year was 1620. The passengers included business people hired by investors in the New World and Christian separatists who were seeking greater religious freedom. They became known as the Pilgrims, and they established a colony in Massachusetts after their arrival, which followed more than two months on stormy Atlantic seas. On this date in 1961, a powerful storm made landfall in mainland Japan. Its name was Typhoon Nancy. It caused at least 173 deaths in the country. And before it reached Japan, Nancy's sustained wind speeds were the highest ever recorded, 215 miles per hour, though some meteorologists say they actually might have been lower than that because measurements weren't as accurate in the 1960s. Word and out. Who was known as the father of American football? Newt Rockne, Jim Thorpe, 
Red Grange, Walter Camp. The man who took a sport combined from rugby and soccer and restructured its rules into American football was Walter Camp. Dan Bailey puts it in the air. What you're watching is perhaps the most dangerous play in football. Five yards deep out of the end zone. The kickoff return. Down the sideline. It's space and speed. So if you think about where we're standing here, you've got players that are lined up, in this case, maybe 50, 60 yards away from where we are. They're running down the field as fast as they can possibly run. So coming down the field at speed and then having collisions obviously is, is, a, is a driver for injury. The NFL says last season concussions occurred four times more often on a kickoff than any other play. Go, go. It's exactly why Riverdale Country School in the Bronx wants to change the game. John Pizzi is the school's athletic director. Yeah, so in 2018, we had 18 players left for the last game of our season. We had a bunch of concussions and a bunch of season-ending injuries. So we made a decision to cancel our last game. But when that season ended, we had to figure out how we were going to manage the next football season. So together with the Concussion Legacy Foundation, they proposed something pretty radical, getting rid of the sport's most iconic play, no more kickoffs no more returns. The beginning of their games now look like this. Play just starts at the 35-yard line. And so far, Pizzi says, they've seen a 33% decrease in concussions across the league. And importantly, an 18% increase in participation. But the NFL's chief medical officer, Dr. Alan Sills, says the league is not yet ready to give up on the kickoff altogether. All options are on the table. I mean, I think that certainly eliminating the play is one of those options, but, but I believe there are potentially other solutions. So, this year in the NFL, you're gonna see a very different sort of kickoff, what they're calling a dynamic kickoff. Only the kicker is back here, while the opposing teams are lined up all the way over here, separated by just five yards. And none of those players can move until the ball has been caught by the receiving team or it hits the ground. It reduces the speed and the space of the play. At the NFL level, the change wasn't just intended to make kickoffs safer. It was done to encourage more kick returns and make the game more exciting. But after week one anyway, there wasn't a substantial increase in returns with many teams opting for a touchback. At Riverdale, Dr. Sanjay Gupta reported that parents and players like no longer having a kickoff. But critics say these kinds of changes take away an important tradition of the game and make it less exciting. It is possible for the new rules to be adjusted as the season goes on. The Great Lakes State, aka the Wolverine State, is the first state we're traveling to in today's world of viewers. Mr. Maynard's class is in the city of Dearborn, Michigan, home of the pioneers of Dearborn High School. Saddling up and riding west to Wyoming, we come to Rock Springs Junior High School. Miss Spalding's class is in the home of the Jaguars in Rock Springs. And consider Hidden Lake High School found. Mr. Duggins or Mr. Dugan's class is there in the community of Westminster, Colorado. It looks like we're gonna wrap up today's show in the southeastern Asian country of Malaysia. And when we say looks like, we mean it looks like Uncle Roger. He's a well-known comedian and YouTube personality in the country, and 388 other people rocked his fire orange polo and black pants to set a Guinness World Record on Saturday. The record? The biggest gathering of people dressed as Uncle Roger. And the venue was at a shopping mall near where his own restaurant had its grand opening. It was an event that both resembled others but looked alike nothing else. When a whole doppelganger of people were caricatured to mirror a favorite uncle right as they duplicate. But did they manage to twin that world record? Roger that. I'm Uncle Carl Azus, and we don't care whom you look like. It's always great having you watching the world from A to Z. You mean the world to me.